Hi, and welcome to Art with Mrs. Torres. Today, we are going to be doing an art project inspired by the New York pop artist. His name is Dean Russo. Now, Dean Russo loves animals already. I love this artist because he loves to draw dogs, which are one of my favorite animals. We had a dog. His name was Boomer, and he lived for nine years, and I miss him so much. And it would be really fun to do a project about your pet today. So if you don't have a pet, like I don't have a dog anymore, but I wish I did, then you can just follow along with me and draw a dog with me. Now, if you do have a pet at home, you could turn this into your dog or your cat. It's going to be a fun project, but today I would love you to try working with watercolor. So if you have a set of watercolors at home, I'd like you to gather that up with some water and a crayon and maybe a Sharpie marker if you have it. Now, if you don't have watercolors, you can always just use markers at home like Crayola markers or crayons or colored pencils or anything else that can get some beautiful vibrant colors. So gather up the supplies you're going to need and then meet me back here and we'll do our project together. It's going to be fun. Well let's get ready to start our project. I'm so excited to do our lesson today. We're going to have so much fun learning to draw a dog and drawing in the style of Dean Russo. So some of the things that I'm going to have you look for in your house, you're going to need a piece of watercolor paper if you are planning on painting with watercolors. So if you're going to be working with some kind of watercolors, now I've got a couple different brands here. This is Prang, this is Crayola, and I also have another one that I found at the art store that's got a couple more extra colors in it. Whatever you have for watercolor will work great. It doesn't matter whether it's a fancy brand or just a brand that you got at the dollar store. We just need it to add some color, and I like to work with watercolor paper when I'm working with watercolor. However, if you don't have watercolor paper, you can always do your project with crayons or markers and then just do it on a regular piece of multimedia paper or paper that comes out of your printer. So one of the things that you're going to need is watercolors and a paintbrush to paint with, obviously, if you're going to be painting. And you're going to need some water if you're going to be watercoloring. The other item you're going to need is a pencil, an eraser, a crayon or an entire set of crayons would be even more helpful if you want to do lots of color and or a sharpie marker so if you don't have a black crayon you could use a sharpie marker i'm going to be doing my outline today in black crayon so go ahead and pause the video and gather up those items and then meet me back here and we'll get ready to start our project Welcome back. Let's get ready to draw our fun picture of a dog. Now, I don't want you to worry about it looking like this dog. You can draw a picture of your own dog if you have one, or you can just follow along with me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, the first thing we're going to do is use our pencil to find the center of our paper like we always do. We're going to make a little dot in the center of our paper. This little dot will help us in making sure that everything has a good placement on our paper. Now we're going to be drawing this dog, which is a St. Bernard, like my dog Boomer. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go right here from this dot and we're going to draw a, la a large oval right around that dot. That oval is going to become our nose for our dog. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start right here from the center of that oval. We're going to draw a straight line down and we're going to round it on both sides like this. This is that little separation in his nose right here. Now then we're going to come around to this side. We're going to loop a small loop around for his nostril. We're going to match it on this side. And then we're going to round this section right here as well. I'm going to darken my line just a little bit so you can see the shape of my nose now. Now the next part of our dog is going to be right here, his big muzzle. So we're going to come above his nose here and very lightly we're going to draw a curved shape that goes around his nose on both sides, kind of like we're making a rainbow. 
Let me move a couple of my supplies over. Since I'm left-handed, I always bump my supplies. So I'm gonna make kind of a rainbow all the way around his nose. It's gonna come down below his nose. We're gonna get ready to draw this part right underneath his nose, and then we're gonna draw this section of his lip. Now, St. Bernard's lips droop low like this. <laughs> they kind of always look like they're sad, but trust me, they're not sad. So I'm gonna make a line that comes down here and then I'm gonna make a loop that comes on this side. And another loop comes around on this side. Then in this section right here, I'm just gonna draw a gentle curve. That's gonna be his tongue. So to make it look like a tongue, I'm just gonna draw a light little line coming down and we're not gonna bring it all the way to the end. Then I'm going to draw another curve right below it. This area here is going to be his lip. And then we're going to give him a chin underneath. So I'm going to draw a curved line that goes here and a curved line that comes around here to match his chin. So now that we've drawn his kind of his droopy jowls here and his lip, his tongue, I'm going to very softly take my pencil and color this section here to remind me that that's gonna be his lip. I don't know what color I'm gonna make it later. I have to decide whether I'm gonna do a black or blue or purple. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of shading inside of his nostrils here to remind me I wanna color those in also. All right, now we're gonna move up to starting to draw the top of his head. So from here, I'm going to draw a line that goes up on this side and a line that comes up on this side. Now, if you ran your fingers right up the middle here, this is going to be the bridge of his nose right here. It comes down from his forehead. I'm gonna bring it up on both sides and then I'm going to start to draw the top of his head. So I'm gonna come up here and draw a large swooping curve at the top. And then I'm going to bring this line out on both sides. Once I have that shape, we're gonna bring it around close to his cheek down here and connect it at the bottom. And I'm gonna match it on this side and connect it at the bottom. Now let's get ready to draw his eyes. So right up here where we made this kind of rainbow swoop, kind of on the angle from his nose here, I'm going to draw a curving line here. I'm going to match it on this side. Now, it would be really cute to keep our dog's eyes closed like this if you'd like to. You can make his eyes closed, or you could open his eyes up like the photograph of this painting that Dean Russo did. Now, if you want to open up his eyes, all you have to do is draw a rounded curve that comes up, around, and back. And I can match it on this side up around and back. Now, once I've drawn this part of his eye, I'm going to add his eyelid. So I'm just going to draw a lot, another line that goes around and over on this side. I'm going to match it on this side too, up, around, and over. Now let's figure out his eyeballs. So in this photo, the St. Bernard is looking dry kind of straight ahead, but you don't have to make your dog looking straight ahead. He could be looking down at his nose or over to the side. But for today, I'm gonna to keep it simple and I'm gonna make his eyes looking straight ahead also. So I'm just gonna make a rounded curve like this in both eyes. I'm gonna give him a big pupil, which is the black circle in his eye and another smaller circle for the shiny light in his eye. Now to remind me what part is his black pupil, I'm going to take my pencil and very softly color the circle that's around the smaller circle. This is the highlight, this is the pupil, that's gonna be the colored part of his eye. Once I'm done with that part of his face, we're gonna add big floppy ears. I'm gonna come over here and my ears are gonna be coming all the way off the page 
you're going to come down and flop a little bit in front of his face like this. I'm going to match it on the other side. So I'm going to go up and off the edge of the paper, round back down. I want to make sure that they line up with this side. And up in front of his face a little bit and back. You want to make sure that the ears are kind of fat on the edges and rounded at the bottom. Now, a St. Bernard has very furry ears. This does not have to be a St. Bernard. It could be any kind of dog, but his ears will be furry later. So now, once I'm done creating this part, we're going to give him a big, fat, fluffy neck. So I'm going to bring a swooping kind of curve right underneath here. And then his shoulders are going to come out to the bottom of the paper. I'm going to match it on this side, a big, round curve. Bring his shoulders out to the edge of the paper. And if you want to, you could even add a collar if you have room. You could give your dog a collar underneath. So now, before we begin to do our outlining, I want to make sure that the nose is very rounded right here where his muzzle is. So I'm going to come back in and kind of round the bottom up a little bit more here. And there is a section on a St. Bernard where his muzzle is kind of dark underneath his nose. So I'm just gonna make a light line like this to remind me I'm gonna color that a different color later. So right now with my pencil, I can just kind of go like this to remind me. Now my dog is going to be very furry. Right now he doesn't look furry, but I'm gonna wait until I get to my marker on my crayon for doing the fuzz on his face. And the other thing that you're going to want to do to make your St. Bernard look like a St. Bernard is give him a big patch of fur around his eye, like this. So if you look at the St. Bernard, see they have a big patch of dark fur around their eyes. So we'll look back and we'll make that a fun color later. It doesn't have to be dark. It could be a light color if you want to. We're just going to have fun today with this project. Okay, so now we're ready to outline our picture. So you can use a Sharpie marker and then go in with everything with your watercolor later, or you could outline it with a black crayon. So sometimes I like to use a crayon when I'm using watercolor because a crayon will resist the watercolor, which means it kind of blocks the watercolor away. So for today, I'm gonna to be using a crayon. Now I can start with a skinny crayon like this, but I happen to have this big fat chubby crayon that just saves me a little time for the video today. So I might trade over to that one later, but just use your regular crayon that you have at home. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give my dog some fur on his head. Now, one thing that Dean Russo is known for is that his outlines of his dogs are very dark. He makes a big, thick outline. So we're gonna make sure to go over our lines a couple times with our crayon or our Sharpie marker when we're done. So we wanna make sure the outline is very thick and dark black. So right now I'm just trying to trace it around my ear and I'm gonna make my dog have a little bit more fur I'm starting with the head and the ears. And then this section of fur up here above his nose. Now I'm gonna trace that swooping curve. And you can keep this line here or you can erase it, it's up to you. As I'm tracing around, trying not to rub my hand too much on the paper. This is going to be his tongue. I'm going to trace his nose now. Now remember we used our pencil inside the nostril 
to help us remember the part that we wanted to color in black. So I'm going to color that in black. This is going to be his black lip. My dog had black lips too. Then I'm going to make his chin more furry. And of course, his fur, oh my goodness. Boomer had the most wonderful furry coat. He was like a giant blanket. When I would be drawing in my art studio, he would come out and lay right beneath my feet and he would keep me warm better than any blanket in the world. He breathe, He would breathe really heavy. St. Bernard's breathe really loud. <laughs> he always sounded like he was out of breath. So as you're tracing around all of the pencil lines that you want to keep, be thinking about the colors and the patterns that we're going to be drawing later. So as you can see, I'm coloring in my pupils but I'm leaving this extra circle here because that one I'm going to color a different color later. All right, now I think I have traced most of my lines. I can't forget this little line right here. This is that little patch of fur that's a different color on his muzzle. I don't know what color I'll end up making it. So once I'm done with that, you can see that he's starting to look like a real dog, but then we have all this fun swirls and patterns that we're going to be drawing. Before I do that, I wanna go over my outline one more time. So what I'm gonna have you do is pause the video and go back and trace every single one of your outlines one time more so it's darker. I want it to be super dark and black when you're done. A big, thick line, just the way Dean Russo does his so I'm going to have you pause the video, take a minute, and just go back a couple minutes and go back and make that outline super dark like this, okay? Okay, you're back, and now we're going to get ready to make some patterns. Now, when we're making our patterns, our outlines for our patterns, we're going to switch colors with our crayon. I'm going to have you look inside your crayon box and find another pretty dark color to start making some outline patterns with. You can use green or purple or blue or any color that you think would be a dark color for making some patterns and outlines. So I'm gonna be working with purple, I think. I love purple, that would be a fun color to start with. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at some ideas from Dean Russo's artwork. And he's got, I love this part right here. Look at these fun swirls here. So I think I'm gonna start right here underneath the chin of my dog, and I'm going to be making a big round swirl just the way he did. So let's look at how he did that drawing. So he went around like this, and then he looped it around and he brought it back again. So I'm going to start it up here and I'm going to follow just kind of like an elephant's trunk all the way around and then connect it at the end. Now, once I'm done making one swirl on one side, you can stick with the same color or you could change colors and do a different color on the other side. So I'm gonna stay with my same color and I'm gonna match it on this side. And then it's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna add different patterns with other crayons later. So let's see, what else could we do for a pattern? I could make some swirls. I could make some polka dots. I could switch up colors and try a different color. I could make some stripes. And then when you're switching colors, go back in and add that color somewhere else. 
in your project. So I'm going to come in. I saw that he made some boxes here. I'm going to match what he did. And I'm going to be using a different color. And if you use it on one side, I want you to find another place somewhere else where you can use it in another area. So I think I'll match it on this side. While I have that color in my hand, I'm going to go up here to the top and I'm going to find a place where I can make a pattern or a shape. Now, you can make an organic shape like this. An organic shape means it's free form. Or you could make a shape like the shapes you know, triangles, circles, squares. Be creative and experiment. Now, when you're doing this, you can use different colors. Um, you'll notice that I didn't erase any of my pencil lines because it really doesn't matter. I'm going to be covering everything up with all kinds of color and patterns and shapes. So I'm not really worried about everything being perfect. But you see that I'm taking my green now and I'm finding a new place to use it. When you're finished, I want you to keep experimenting and trying some new colors. Don't just try two or three. Keep going through your crayon box and keep experimenting. Later, we're going to go in with our watercolor. But if you're pressing with firm pressure with your crayons, you're going to get a really nice resist when we paint over it in a little while. I'm going back with those three colors I used earlier. And I'm doing a repeating pattern now. So I'm going to have you continue working, filling in your picture. And then when you're done, you're going to turn the video back on and we'll get ready to paint. So I'm going to pause my video right now. I'm going to keep working. I want you to keep working and then meet me back here when you're done with your patterns. Okay, I'm ready to begin doing my painting. How about you? Did you outline all of your projects? Before we do, we might want to go in with your crayon and color just a few places in so that you've got a good wax resist when we go over this with our watercolors in a little while. So before we begin, I'm going to clean up my area, put all my crayons back in my cup. I'm going to find my paint set. And I'm going to be using a napkin for blotting my paintbrush on. If you don't have a napkin, a paper towel would work also. And I'm going to get a little bowl of water. Now, I'm left-handed, so when I am painting today, I'm going to want to make sure that my paints are on the left-hand side. I'm going to want to make sure that my water is above my napkin. And then I like to keep it in a shallow bowl. That way I don't tip it over. Um, sometimes when you use a glass, it might spill. So we're going to get ready to do our painting. The first thing is you're going to want to take your paintbrush and you're going to rinse it in your bowl because it might be dirty from the last time somebody used the paint. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you add a few drops of water to the top of your paint set. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my brush, I'm scooping up water, and I'm very softly tapping it on the top of the paint. I'm not stirring it. I'm just placing a couple drops on the top of the paint. Now I'm gonna rinse my brush just in case I might get a little bit of paint on my brush. I don't want it to transfer to the next color. And I'm just going through all of the paint colors and putting a few drops of water. And what that water is going to do is it's going to start to wake up that paint while it's sitting there. Because when we're painting with watercolors, we don't want to paint with the actual paint. We're going to paint with the water that's floating on top of the paint set. So if you could picture that your paintbrush, the hairs on the tip of your paintbrush are going to literally just tickle the water floating on the top, 
That is the way that an artist paints with watercolor paint. We want our paint to be see-through, which is called transparent. We don't want it thick where we can't see our beautiful drawing underneath. All right, it looks like I've got most of my colors wet that I'm going to be wanting to use today. I'm not going to be using any black, and I do would prefer you not to use black because we've already used that in our in our uh, crayon today. The other color I am not going to be using is white. I don't want to use any white today. I'm going to try to stick to bright colors. So in order for my water to stay as clean as possible, I want to start with the lightest color in my, in my watercolor set. So my lightest color in my set is yellow. I'm going to set my brush in the water. Now you notice I'm not digging it down into the paint. I'm just lightly tapping it in the water. And I can see that my paintbrush is getting a little bit of paint on it, but I'm just tapping it in the water. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to fill a space in with my yellow paint. Now it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be the same place that I'm painting. So I'm going to fill the space in. I'm going to paint right over my crayon. I'm going to get a little bit more water and paint on my brush. And I'm going to start just filling in a few places. I'm painting right over the crayon. Every once in a while, get a little more water on your brush. Give it a little drink and then tap it back into the set. And what I want you to do is I'd like you to paint about six different places with your paint. So going through, find six big areas that you can paint. And if you could, please spread those spaces out too. Don't paint them all on one side of the picture. We want it to kind of be popping all around the picture. So I've got yellow here and here, and here and here, that's four. I need a big area of yellow painted. So I think I'm gonna go up here and paint this whole section right up here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and maybe over here, six. Now I noticed that I painted this yellow and this yellow, so I might have to switch that color later or this color later, and I can do that because yellow is a great base color for mixing orange with or red or pink. I'm gonna rinse my brush now. Or you could also do uh, yellow and green together. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna move on to my next color, which is orange. I'm gonna go over here to the orange. I'm gonna tap the orange with my brush. If your paint set has orange, you can go ahead and move on to orange. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before and I'm gonna bounce around my picture, finding another place where I can paint a whole big section. So I think I'm gonna do his chin, orange. And then I'm going to go up here to the top of his head and paint one of these large organic shapes orange. You want to paint big spaces too, not just a tiny little dot somewhere. So I'm on to three. Let's see. I'm going to fill this space in. Remember, I did it yellow before and I said I could change it later. So I can change it now with my orange and it will look different than the yellow. Now, when you are painting, another trick is to make sure that as you're bouncing around, you're not painting two spots side by side because that way it gives your first paint time to dry. That way the colors won't bleed together or leak together. All right, when you are finished finding your six places, you can go ahead and rinse your brush out and move on to a next color. So for my next color, I'm going to move over to red. So my red needs a little bit of water on top. I skipped it. I'm going to put a little water on it and then I'm going to tap my brush in the water. I'm not digging my brush into the paint. I'm just very lightly brushing it across the top. And then I'm going to paint something red. So I'm going to go in and I think I'm going to be painting this whole section right here. Now 
Now in my paint set, my red kind of looks like a red orange. It's not a very dark red, but when it dries, I can add a second coat later. So I'm gonna have you continue to do this, mixing in one color at a time, and you're gonna do it six colors all around your picture, just like how we're doing this today. And then when you're finished, you're gonna have this amazing, beautiful painting. So I'd like you to continue doing your painting, the same as I'm doing mine. Each time you're gonna rinse your brush before you move on to the next color. And don't forget that you're not painting with the paint. You're painting with the water that floats on top of the paint. So let me experiment with this color here and I can show you something that's really neat. When you're painting, if you keep adding more and more paint like this, it starts to get really dark. Do you see how dark my pink is there? It's really, really dark. It's not going to be able to show my other colors underneath. So what I can do now is rinse out my brush and not use any more paint, just water. And I'm going to put a little bit of water now right next to where I just painted. And you'll notice the water, as I start to just pull that water up into my picture, the paint is going to start following it. You see, I'm not adding any more paint. I'm just putting a little drop of water and I'm wiggling it up and I'm controlling the paint because where the paper's dry, the paint's not going to go. It's only going to go where the paper's wet. So right now I'm adding a little water right here. And then you're going to notice that this color can start to trail right up that little wet patch. You can help move it along by just getting a little tickle with your brush like this. And then I can let that space dry as well. When you do something like this, it can make a project radiate, radiate from one color to another. So you could do purple on one end and pink on the other and let them meet in the middle. So that is another really neat idea that you could do with your colors. I'm gonna go down with my pink now and fill in a couple more spots. And I'm gonna give you now a little bit of time for you to finish your painting. Now, if you did not have paint today, you can do the same exact thing, just using crayons or markers and filling in your picture. So I'm gonna pause my video. You're gonna pause your video. You're gonna finish painting and then meet me back here when all of your dog is filled in. I have finished my painting. Have you finished your painting? I had a lot of fun doing this project and I liked being creative and just experimenting with some organic shapes as, as well as regular shapes. I also had fun mixing some colors together and experimenting with that. And then before we go today, I have another idea for you. Now you can finish your project by coloring a really soft background. You want to make sure these colors pop and they're very bold or you could cut your picture out and mount it onto a bright colored piece of paper. Maybe you could do it on a bright blue or bright hot pink or purple or green or even black. This black would be a beautiful color to mount it on. So I hope you had fun today learning about our artist, Dean Russo, as well as looking at pictures of his work and then being inspired to draw our own dog. I hope you had fun. Please send me an email at rtorres at lcusd.net. I would love to see a picture of the painting that you come up with. See you next time. Bye.